I started making art when I moved to Boulder to go to graduate school in the late 80s. My partner, Jack, loaned me some of his brushes and materials, and so I started playing around at that point and discovered I really liked art. By the time I got my master's, I was already showing in galleries, and the, the art was doing so well that I moved from, my major was writing, creative writing, from that into making art. If there's a narrative quality in my paintings, it comes from my love of the narrative, of story. I don't know if anybody else sees this, but I'm always interested in what's happening just off stage, what's happening in the moment before you get this scene, and what happens in the moment after this scene. Those things are in my head as I'm painting. So there is a connection, I think, to the writing. It's always a question of what's, what's going on in the characters in the painting. See, I'm even calling them characters instead of figures, as you would expect in a painting. To me, they're characters. That, that it's a stage set. It's a, it's a story that's unfolding. I spend a lot of time in university libraries and the art departments going through art history books. And one of the most successful ways I've had in the past is to find an image that strikes me and then look at it long enough until a new story begins to tell itself to me through the existing painting. I'll then hire a model, pose the, the model in those specific poses, and then work from a photograph of the model, uh, inserting it into that existing art historical reference painting. Another way of my working process works is that I start not with the art historical reference, but then with the model. What has the model done, or what kind of pose have I gotten? So on, then I'm on a search from the other direction. I'm looking from the point of view of the existing figure, which is going to come alive in a certain kind of, almost always art, not always, but almost always an art historical background. So then I'm in the library looking, not just for images that strike me, but for a specific kind of background in which this story that's being told from this model, model's particular pose, might come alive. Probably the first thing that made me gravitate toward that Bouguereau image was the idea of parenting that I was thinking about when I painted that. I was in my mid-40s. The question occurred to me as to whether I would have ever become a father myself. It seemed unlikely that that would happen, and in fact it has not happened. And I was trying to process how I felt about that. How do I feel, especially growing up in this society where it's very typical that you reach a certain age and you become a parent. And it was an endlessly amusing time for me to, along with the poignancy, I think, to paint that particular image. And, um, and still the desire arises at times, the idea of being um, someone in charge someone charged with the care of another human being, a vulnerable child, is, is something that still pulls at me. You could say that I was trying to psych myself out in one sense. You know, it's going to be horrible. You're going to have to take care of these kids. You're not going to be confident. It's going to be overwhelming. A as a way to, to deal with the uncomfortable feeling of, of a very real desire. So. The idea came for me when I saw the Bouguereau's painting that I wanted to try that with a male father instead of the mother. And I asked myself what kind of expression would the father have if he found himself in this situation. The, the expression on the mother figure is the most serene face you can imagine. She's in complete control. She's poised. She's. Uh, not only competent, but supremely confident in caring for these, for these children. Um, and so I wanted to push that the opposite direction. It's of course a, an expression of surprise, dismay, uh, disconcerting kind of vulnerability maybe, certainly not confidence in the situation that he finds himself in. He's completely freaked out. <laughs> The mother figure has her 
foot on a jar of coins and the coins spill out onto the, toward the viewer. Uh, the painting is called Charity and she becomes this personification of, of the idea of generosity or charity. I replaced the round shaped jar with a soccer ball, which again amused me. The idea of uh, soccer mom, in this case soccer dad, what are the implications of that as part of the role of, of finding yourself in the caretaker role as a father instead of the usual provisional role that a father might play. And the sociological questions are inescapable in one sense that there, there happen to be these roles in the society, but now they're undergoing these changes, have been going under the, uh, undergoing changes for quite a while. So to take that idea of those changes into account seemed uh, to add just another layer to the painting. I always loved being in the museum, even as a little kid. In every experience that I had walking through the museum, I never saw my story. It's always the same kind of uh, heterosexual, uh, whatever powers that be that are being legitimated in the kind of stories that are being told in those paintings. There is something that matters about paintings hanging on museum walls where they enshrine that collective experience that we have. And so I was thinking, What's happening to other kids like that? Other gay kids, what do they see when they walk through the museum? And so I started making paintings that I thought, if these paintings get into museums, where the male figure is heroicized in such a way with, with at least some erotic content, how can I play with that and get some part of this story into a setting where it then becomes a part of the the story. I'm happy to say that there are now some of those paintings out there in museums and I imagine some kid, you know, some gay 12-year-old boy walking up to the fatherhood painting and, and something in him smiling in a way where that part of human experience gets legitimated or, or at least acknowledged.